Welcome to Magnify Him Church, located at 4509 Island Avenue, Philadelphia, PA, 19153, mm -hmm. at the Double Tree Hotel, Ballroom A. Mm -hmm. Our Sunday services start with intercessory prayer at 1030, Life Changing Church at 1045, our main service start at 12 o'clock noon till 1.30 p.m. And that ends out our services for the day. May the grace of God continue to be with us always. Amen. 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 a number to what eternity is. I dare you to do it because it is impossible to do. Amen. The average life expectancy right now in this country is 72 years. Amen. That's one of the longest life expectancies in the world. Amen. 72 years. But I'm here to tell you this morning that 72 years is just a vapor. 72 years is nothing compared to eternity. Amen. And you need to know this morning exactly where you are going and how this thing all goes down. Amen. Verse 14, for since we believe that Jesus died and raised again to life, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We talked about this this morning in Life Changing Church. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. There is no gap in between. There is no, well, I guess we're going to be sleeping for a while and then one day we'll wake up. I guess we, 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 we don't know about what happens in this time before Jesus comes back and when we die here. No, 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 no. When we close our eyes here, when we take our last breath, when our heart stops on this side of measured time, amen, we go to be with the Lord. And when he returns, when he returns to judge this world, amen, those of us that have already died on and that still be with him, amen, we're coming back, amen. And those of us that are still walking around on this time now, we're going to also be caught up. So whether you be dead or alive, amen, you will know, a, you will be exactly where you are supposed to be, which is with the Lord, amen. That's why we have hope. That's why we have joy, because we know no matter what, no matter what, we know we're going to be with him. Amen. You are in a win-win situation. Come on now. That don't make you happy. I don't know what will. You are in a win-win situation. Amen. You can't lose. You can't lose because you made the choice. You made the choice. When you accepted Jesus Christ, you made the choice to become a winner and to become a winner for eternity. Amen. So we ought not be waking up with despair. We ought not be waking up on the wrong side of the bed. We ought not be walking around and not knowing, amen, where we are going. Amen. We ought not be walking around without hope. We ought not be speaking death into our life. So many of us want to speak the things of death into our life. Oh, well, I guess this is it. I guess this is over. I guess God don't love me no more. I guess he's not with me. We talked about all the seasonality of life and we still have a season left, amen. We didn't get to the harvest season yet, amen. I'm making y'all wait a little bit, amen. Because that's what God does with us, amen. He makes us wait a little bit, amen. We're not getting to the harvest season or the good season yet. But as we talked about the pruning season, as we talked about the stretching season, amen. As we talked about all these seasons, amen, that we're going through in life, amen. We learn, amen, that it is Jesus Christ that is the one that is with us all along the way. And if we can just make it through those seasons, amen, we're going to make it to the promised land. We're going to make it to the harvest season, amen. So we ought not be going through these seasons now like we don't know. We ought not be going through these seasons talking about, well, I guess God hates me. 
We ought not be going through these seasons when we're not in the harvest season. The harvest season is when everything's going well. We ought not be in these other seasons of trials and tribulations talking about how God don't love us no more. We ought not be speaking things of negativity over our life. We all go through these different seasons to bring forth God's purpose in our life. Amen. And we need to make sure that while we are going through these seasons, amen, because everyone is watching, we need to make sure that we maintain our hope because that's what this sermon this morning is all about. Hope, hope that whether we still be here or whether we go to be with the Lord, we got hope that at the end of the day, it's a win-win situation. We cannot lose. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord remains will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with the commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. We talked about this this morning. We're all coming back. We're all coming back. It doesn't matter. People out there are missing. Never even knew where they was. We're all coming back. They will be discovered. There's not, there's not a, a devil in hell, amen, that has done something that can be hidden from God, amen. God knows everything. We're all coming back. Then together with them, we who are still alive remain on earth to be caught up in the clouds and meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. Now, this is a big controversial verse right here. It's a big controversial verse. I'm not even sure if some people won't even at me on YouTube when they see this, because a lot of people have been taught. I was one of them in the church for many years was taught about this thing called the rapture. Amen. Where we all just fly away somewhere. Amen. And that's where this comes from, from this verse right here. But as you can see, saints, we're not flying nowhere. We're going to meet the Lord in the clouds, but that's when he's coming back down here. He's coming back down here to judge. Amen. We're not just flying away somewhere. This is on the day of judgment where we meet him. Amen. But then we come back down. Amen. And he brings with him all of us who have passed on before. Amen. So we have hope that no matter what, we are going to be with Jesus. Whether we meet him in the clouds or whether we come down with him from already passing on. That's what the purpose of all this is, to let you know where you're going. So encourage each other with these words. Encourage each other. Amen. That's why Sister LBC read when she read the announcements this morning. She started off with 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4 verse 13. Letting us know that, hey, it's all right. It's all right where our sister has gone. Hey, we probably going there too one day. Amen. <laughs> we probably going there too one day. And she has already gone to that place where we all hope to be. Amen. But see, you can't have that hope if you don't know the truth, if you don't have the scriptures in front of you, because it is the job of the enemy to to persuade you to go in a different direction, to persuade you to go in a different way. He wants you to believe that it is all over. He wants you to believe that there is nothing ahead of you but death. He wants you to believe that the Lord has turned his back on you. I don't care what you're going through right now. He wants you to believe that God is not a part of it. He wants you to believe that God has abandoned you. But in actuality, God is standing there with you the whole way. And the only reason why we go through the sufferings of life, the only reason why we go through the trials and tribulations of life is because we have to get closer to him. That's it. Look at Job. Job was a man. Job ain't do nothing wrong. Amen. Job didn't do nothing wrong. All he did was worship the Lord. And that's what caused him to suffer more than any other person will ever suffer. Just because he was close to the Lord. I want you to know something this morning. You can have trials and tribulations just because you believe. Just because you believe. Oh my goodness, nowhere does it say because you accept Jesus Christ, you now walk down the yellow brick road. Amen. Nowhere does it say there's rainbows and unicorns and every day is sunny and there's never a raindrop. It doesn't say that anywhere. But let me tell you the promise and the hope that we have. 
that whether we be dead, whether we be alive, either way, we still got Jesus. And I don't know about you, as long as I got Jesus, I'm all right. As long as I got Jesus, I know that it's going to be okay. Amen. I believe the songwriter said, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Amen. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, I know who holds the future. Come on, y'all. And life is worth living just because he lives. See, we don't sing songs like that no more. Amen. Everybody want to dance and jump around and all that. But a song like that will help you make it through the night. A song like that will help you out when all hell is breaking loose at 1 a.m., amen. A song like that will keep you in your spirit, amen, and allow you to make it to see the sunrise the next day. We are not living in despair, amen. We have hope. Chapter 5 says, now concerning how and when this will all happen, everybody wants to know when does this go down? Give me a date. Give me a time. Give me something so I know I can put it on a calendar. Amen. Let me know. Send me a text message. Let me know that it's going down. So many people try to predict the day that the Lord is coming back. When will the world end? When is everything going to change? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Don't let anybody trick you into thinking that they know. Because the Bible teaches us that the only person that knows, the only person that knows is the Lord himself. That's it. He's the only one that knows. For you will know quite well when that day is. You will know quite well when that day is. It's not going to be a date or a time, but you're going to know, amen, based on what's going on around you. And what's going to be going on? See, this is good doctrine this morning, y'all. Y'all getting good doctrine this morning, amen? We're going to send the lies of, of, of Satan back to hell, amen? So when will we know that all of this is getting ready to go down? When people are saying everything is peaceful and secure. Then disaster will fall on them suddenly like a pregnant woman in labor pains and there will be no escape. Think about what everyone in the world is fate fighting to do. They all want peace. They all want to be able to wake up and say, I know that everything is safe and secure. I don't have nothing to worry about. I got a million dollars in the bank. I got $10 million in the bank because if anybody has ever known an unsaved person, that worships money, even the same person that worships money and caught up in sin. Everyone knows how they think. They get a million dollars, a million is never enough. Because now all of a sudden, your father, the devil, when you are caught up in sin, he tells you that you don't have enough. He creates another problem for you. Do you know you could have five dollars in your pocket and have more peace than a person with five million? You know that? Amen. See, this is what this is all about. We have peace. You can't put a price tag on peace. Amen. When you know what you know and you know who your father is, you have peace. Bible teaches us those that keep their minds stayed on Jesus, you got perfect peace. That's how you can go through a storm. That's how you can go through a health trial. That's how you can go through a divorce. That's how you can go through a breakup. That's how you can go through losing your job. That's how you can go through not having any money. That's how you can withstand those things. How you can go through being married to a person for 30 years. You come home one day and they no longer there. They just up and decided to go. You can go through those things because you have Jesus. You keep your mind stayed on Jesus. He will carry you through. Our sister Nia and all the suffering she went through while she was here in her physical body. I never heard her speak about it. Never heard her speak about it. Never heard her complain. Never heard her say anything. Because she had Jesus. 
we sat up here, I sat up here sometimes and I said, man, I, I couldn't imagine what it would be like to be blind. I couldn't imagine what it would be like to not be able to see. But she never complained about anything. Never complained about anything. And that's what happens when you have Jesus. When you have Jesus, the world can look at you on the outside and they can say, man, I can never do that. Amen. They can say, man, I could never, I could never experience that. I could never go through. And you know what? You're right. Because I have a portion of the Lord which is carrying me through this. Amen. 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 But you aren't in the dark about these things, dear brothers and sisters. See, you know. And you won't be surprised when the day of the Lord comes like a thief. See, the world will be surprised because they're sitting around putting their faith in all their worldly possessions. They got 20 guns, amen. They're not worried about somebody kicking in their door. They put their faith in all their weapons. But if you can't draw your weapon fast enough... <laughs> You're going to be in trouble. But this is what people do. They, they go out there and they try to put their faith in everything else except for God. And when the Lord returns, it will be that day when everyone is, is screaming about peace. Nations aren't going to be fighting no more. Everybody's going to be at peace. It's going to be a time where everybody thinks they're happy. But it's going to be a false sense of hope. Because just like that, like a thief in the night. The Lord will return. Mm -hmm. But you all, you're not going to be surprised about that. For we are children of the light. We are children of the day. We don't belong to darkness in the night. Amen. So be on guard. Be on guard. Not asleep like others. Stay alert and clear headed. Watch what goes on in the world. God gave you a brain and he gave you the scriptures. Amen. So that you can discern exactly what is going on. Amen. We ought not be supporting anything that is not of him. Amen. We ought not be standing for anything that is not of him. Amen. amen. Watch what goes on, amen, so that you don't get caught up like these people of the world will be caught up. Because there will be many people who have proclaimed Jesus Christ. There were many people who will stand up and say, Lord, Lord. There will be many people that you will look at and you will say, oh my goodness, they had a church? I thought they led so many people. They had thousands of people in their church. And they didn't make it? Where are they at? Where are they? I thought for sure they would be here. They were workers of iniquity the whole time. They were workers of iniquity the whole time. We won't be like that. We're children of the day, amen. amen. Night is the time when people sleep and drinkers get drunk. But let us who live in the light be clear headed, protected by the armor of faith and love and wearing our helmet as confidence in our salvation. There is a time coming in your life where it's going to be just you and the Lord. Everyone else who is not of him will fall away from you. God will separate you from those people. Amen. He will call you out of the darkness and bring you into his light. Amen. When you are children of the light, you cannot associate with people who are in the dark. That's why there's a separation. There can't be light and darkness in the same place. Can't be, you, can't, you can't be up here proclaiming Lord, Lord, Jesus Christ, and you're a drunker in the night. Doesn't happen that way. One or the other will prevail. One or the other will prevail. I'm a big believer in... I heard this said one time, so I'm not going to claim it like it's mine, but I heard a preacher say one time, he said, he was given the call and the invitation into Christ, and he said, if you're a homosexual, this is the church for you. If you're a drunkard, this is the church for you. If you are a drug addict, this is the church for you. If you are an adulterer, this is the church for you. If you are a person who's just filled with evil, then this is the church for you. If you are a murderer, and you can go all the way down the line, and he said, this is the church for you. And he said that. Why? Not because you're going to come in here and continue to do those things. But he said that because the only thing that can change you is the word of God. So that's why the Bible says, come to God as you are. 
Come to God as you are. I want you, Jesus said, come to me. I want to know all your evil desires. I want to know all the things that you've done before. I want to know exactly how you think. I want to know the, your favorite drink. I want to know your favorite drug of choice. I want to know your, 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 your adultery. I want to know all those things, amen. Because when you give them to me, I can set you free. You can't clean yourself up, amen? So if you're feeling like you're a child of the darkness, if you may be out there in YouTube land, amen, and you know that you just can't seem to move forward, amen, you, ju you just, you want to be a part of this, this family. You want to be a part of this faith. You want to be a part, you want to have more of God, but you just can't seem to let go of the world. I want you to give this church a try. I want you to give Jesus a try, amen. I want you to just read more of his word. I want you to just get more of his word down inside of you. Because the trick of the enemy and what the enemy tries to do, he tries to pull you away. He wants to pull you away from God. If you, if you are a person that is caught up in sin, if you are a person who just can't stop committing this sin, whatever it is, the sin that so easily besets you, I have a plan for you. I have something I want you to try. Instead of committing that sin and allowing the shame and the guilt to pull you away from the Lord, instead of being caught up in that sin and in that trial and saying, you know what, I'm just going to stay away from God. I'm not going to go to church. I'm not going to pray. I, 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 I just need to get away. I'm, I'm too ashamed. I, I, I just got to try to fix this thing. I have something for you. I have something I want you to try. The next time you commit that sin, I want you to open up your Bible. The next time you commit that sin, I want you to talk to God. The next time you commit that sin, I want you to come to church. Because this is a fight. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. The more your spirit wins the more the enemy will die away. You can't get pulled in two different directions. The more you're walking in the spirit, the less you're walking in the flesh. You can't walk in the spirit if you're not being involved in the things of the spirit. And the enemy wants to trick you by pulling you away from the spirit. Let me wrap this thing up. For God chose to save us through our Lord Jesus Christ, not to pour out his anger on us. Christ died so that whether we are dead or alive when he returns, we can live with him forever. So encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. I thank God I didn't walk into a church this morning where everybody had their head down, where everybody was depressed, where everybody was, was just downtrodden and sad in their spirit, amen. I walked into a church this morning, amen, that really walks it like we talk it. <laughs> I walked in this morning to a church this morning, amen, that was full of joy. Amen. That was ready to encourage each other. That was ready to lift up our deacon Mike and let him know we all with you. We all got your back. We all behind you. Amen. We know you'll have your moments, but don't be don't be sad. Don't be sad because your wife is going on before you and she's waiting. She's waiting. Amen. She's waiting to, to, to see you when you get up there. Amen. And we're all going to be with him again. Amen? Amen. Every single one of us. So let's continue to encourage each other. Amen. And let us go forth into this world because there's a dying world. Amen. We may see people on Saturday morning. Amen. We may see people. Amen. Who have not accepted Jesus Christ. They need to see what it means to be a real Christian. Amen. We can't. Listen, I'm closing this thing out. We can't fake this. We can't. We can't. 
because our hope comes from Jesus Christ. That's it. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Amen. That's it. That's all I have. That's all this word is about this morning. I didn't tell you to be happy because everybody's going to heaven. It's going to be this big old party. I didn't tell you that. What I told you was no matter we still living or no matter this body has expired. Either way, we got Jesus. And that's why we got the hope. Amen. And with that, you can stand. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give him glory on that. Amen. We are not by ourselves. We are not abandoned. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to always pray. We pray without ceasing for our sister Nia. I just want to I just want to tell you all right now before we get ready to have a benediction. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. We prayed without ceasing for our sister Nia. And it was God's perfect will for her to go home, amen, where there is no more pain, there is no more suffering, amen. And I thank God, just like I prayed for my grandmother, I thank God when she was sick, amen, that God did not leave her here to suffer. We know where we're going, amen. We know where we're going. We know it's already worked out, amen. Let us stand and raise our right hand for the benediction, amen. Don't get that twisted, amen. And now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God be our Savior, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen.